ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله my respected brothers and my sisters today as a medical doctor and as a family counselor i would like to shed some light on a very important subject on very important issue important concern that we have in our communities at large and as we all are confined to our homes what we are noticing all around the world that domestic violence issue is on rise and as a muslim we are not immune to it and when we talk about muslim family muslim family does not mean that they will never have any issues muslim family is also a natural family and if we look at in our history that even even sahaba's time there were issues at their homes and we see issues even very good example of uh, house of hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu ta'ala anhu and i will also say there were some time you know some situations in the house of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but having issues is not a problem the thing is that how to handle it how to deal with it right now the situation is all around the world that domestic violence has increased 20 to 30 percent i was reading in australia the search for finding solution for domestic violence on internet search has gone up to 75 percent in canada there are certain women shelters where their call rate has increased up to 400% and we are seeing rise in divorce rate we are seeing more child abuse in the families i want to let you know one thing we already have enough in our plate today you know we have you know financial issues fear factor is there we are going through a lot of pressure it's like a pressure cooker situation too many things going on right now so we do not want to increase any problem any further problem what we already have on top of that so we really want to go through next uh, short time that i will give you some background and then inshallah i will give you some tips that how we can handle these situations try to understand one thing brothers that there are sometimes situations that you and me we do not have any control over it we cannot change it we have to learn how to handle it to have a positive perspective of the situation so we should be a problem solver sometimes you cannot do anything this situation is there now you have to face it so we all will learn inshallah in today's program how we can handle those situations you know life is this is what all about in life we will have challenges life will never never be you know always smooth only place where there is no issue no argument uh, no problem is graveyard cemetery qabristan there is no issue no argument everybody is sleeping but when we live in a real world we have to understand we will we may have broken glass we cannot bring that glass back we have to understand how we respond the difference between reaction and response reaction is that there is a abrupt response from you without thinking about the consequences 
without thinking what will happen next. And on the other hand, response is well thought that you have already chosen your words. You have already thought about the situation and now you want to give your opinion about something. Well calculated, well thought. Our problem is that most of the time we react, we do not respond. So we should teach ourselves whenever the situation happens that I am going to respond, not react. Remember one more thing brothers, that handle family issues with love. You know this is not a business transaction. Whenever we are dealing with family, never deal with family with your intellect and your brain. Always deal with family with love. Because family situation is not like how we deal with people outside our home. And also remember that whenever we are angry, there is a disconnect. Disconnect between us and our intellect and our logic. So whenever we are angry, we are not going to listen to any logic. Nothing will affect my intellect because I am at a different station, in a different mode when I am angry about something. And as a side note, whenever we are angry, this shows, this reflects our true personality. You know, when I am angry, my anger will reflect who really I am from inside. So if you want to see my real picture, that who I am, then you should see me when I am angry. So that, will, that is also a reminder for you and me that when we are angry, we should look and analyze ourselves that what is my situation, my brothers and sisters. And also, before I go through some tips, remember one thing, brothers, that families, and I deal with these families every day in my practice, that families where you have domestic violence or broken families, you know, the kids of that family, they, their, their life gets messed up. Their life gets shattered. Broken families and domestic violence families, the kids, they are, they are lost basically between this struggle of fighting. So as a Muslim, you know, and I will share with you that our homes should be the role model for the community. That Muslim families are the families, they resolve their issues and they live in peace. Whenever they have issues, they know how to handle it, how to have a civic you know, dialogue and civic way of resolving uh, the issues. Here, Quran has given us, you know, three ways when we deal with the family. In Surah Taghabun, Ayah number 14, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a, a, a portion of the Ayah. وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَهُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows our psychology. He knows our chemistry. And He is the one who can advise us the best solutions of our problem. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that Ta'afu is pardon. You know, give your family some leniency. Give them some room to function. Excuse them. Forgive them. So this is ta, uh, this is uh, ta'fu. What tasfau? Tasfau is that you overlook. Like you have not seen something happen at your home, and you have seen kids doing something, and you overlook. Urdu mein jise kehte hain nazar churana. You have seen something, but you act like that you have seen nothing. Or akhri nasiyat hai wa taghfuru. Taghfuru is that you. Taghfuru is that you cover their mistakes. 
it's like you have a towel and with towel you just cover something so you cover the mistakes of your family your loved ones my brothers and my sisters and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that fa inna allah ghafurur rahim when you expect when you do mistake when you wrong yourself and it happens to all of us every day you expect from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgive you and he pardon you and he ignore your mistakes when you are expecting that from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allah is commanding you that you should deal with your family ta'fu wa tasfahu wa taghfiru you pardon them you forgive them you give them room to function and you overlook their mistakes and then you cover their mistakes this is the advice from the quran my brothers and my sister then our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said allah loves three marks three, uh, allah loves two marks allah loves two tears and allah loves two swallows and one of the swallow jise ghoot peena kehte hain gussa peena kehte hain one of the swallow that allah loves the most that when you are angry you swallow you channelize you check and you respond when you are angry so you channelize you control yourself you swallow and after well thought then you respond to the issue and allah loves that person who channelizes his anger who controls his anger and this is one of the swallow that allah subhanahu wa taala likes the most in hajjatul wada and right before departure from this dunya prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had advised to you and me at hajjatul wada he said take care of your women and right before his departure from this dunya he says take care of your women and your weak ones the one you are who are dependent on you take care of them be nice to them because they are under your supervision and people who are around you they are dependent on you they are very fragile they are weak people and you know by the way we get angry usually on people who are weak people that we we are angry with these are the people they are dependent on we never get angry on some somebody who is stronger than us or who has higher status than us and some of the scholars they say this is also sign of takabbur as well that when you encounter some issue with somebody who is stronger than you you just you know stop yourself and you just walk away from there you don't say anything but when weak one does something wrong then we react and we say whatever we could and we use the words as strong as we could so my brothers and my sisters the hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that take care of your women and take care of your weak ones and there was a teacher of imam malik rahmatullah alay and he said do not say things about which tomorrow you have to regret and you have to apologize to the pupil so watch your words what you say now i'm going to go through some of the tips that what we can do in these days so that we can keep our family strong our connection is strong and we can have healthy relationship and if anything happens so we can handle that first thing i will advise my brothers and my sisters have a family gathering family meeting family halqa family shura family consultation and plan we don't know this lockdown and these issues of viruses how long they are going to go but this is a healthy way regardless even if we are not in this situation to have a family halqa family gathering family sitting where we all talk to each other and we can plan our days ahead that how we are going to spend plan some 
activity that all of you can do together like after iftar you can sit down and after reading uh, Tarawi and Salatul Isha have some you know uh, talk listening to some talk on TV about the khat, about uh, Dora Quran Tafsir of Quran some motivational speeches you know I was just going through some books with with my family you know some activity and involve your whole family give assignment to your kids that we are going to do Asmai Husna or we are going to read one Hadith or we are going to read few pages from Quran, some Tafsir assign to everybody in your family some assignment teamwork, involve the whole family and this is the best time that we can do some programs to learning program for self-motivation that how we talk to each other how we use proper words how we handle each with each other I'm angry that how I should handle my anger you know sit down with family and plan my brothers and my sisters and this is the really good time for us to connect with our family that we have missed because we were going in the wrong direction we have because of our jobs and our engagements we have really you know sacrificed our families in the past so let's reconnect you know our family one thing I will also say is that for husband and wife both never argue in front of your kids if you have issue then you should also both of you should go in some other room and try to find the solution of a problem or discuss if you have issue with the child you two should discuss how we should handle and who can handle this issue better do not argue in front of your kids you know Imam Ahmad Rahmatullah I will share with you his example when his wife died he, he stood next to her janaza and he said one beautiful thing and he said that this woman was married to me for 40 years but we never had any fight we never had any argument after the tadfeen burial of his wife some of his students they came to Imam and asked how is that possible that for 40 years you were with this woman and you never had fight and, you, and this is what he said and these are his words should be written with gold my brother's gold because this is what I have practiced in my home and wallahi this is the solution and this is what we see from the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu let me see say uh, finish what he said Imam Ahmad he said whenever at home I was angry on something she was quiet she will stay quiet she will say nothing at that time and when she was angry about something then I will smile I will stay quiet and I will let her talk because if both of you get angry and get in argument at the same time then this is not going to go anywhere other than destruction and that's what we see you know Prophet Sallallahu life one time Aisha was you know upset about something anha, but Prophet kept smiling and and whatever happened I don't have time to go in in the detail but the response of Prophet was smiling and he said to the companion at that time sitting with him your mother is angry today your mother is mad and upset about something today this is the key to keep the relationship strong that if someone one party is angry at home the other one should keep quiet smile and then once the solution once is things calm down then you can you know share your point of view my brothers and my sisters because when one is angry I said there is a disconnect between us and our intellect our brain so we will not be we will not be able to receive any logic 
at that point so there is no point of you know trying to do correction at that particular time now if there is a issue you know at your home and you feel very strong about it my suggestion will be a lot of time what happened that I don't like something in my child or I don't like something in my wife or my wife doesn't like something in me we keep that to ourselves. we do not share with the other party and then there is a compound effect then these things will get to the boiling point like a pressure cooker and then we will have this blast the best approach is that if you don't like something about somebody then you should go approach that person in privacy and let that person know that I really this this is something which bothers me this is something I don't like this is something which makes me very comfortable because until and unless you will share that with that particular person how in the world he will know that you have some issue and problem with that person so especially in our homes so let the person know what the problems are and one more thing I will say that we always should look at our mistakes as well a lot of time you know we try to find mistakes of others but we forget ourselves I'm willing to give million excuses to myself but I'm not ready to give even one excuse to the other person and this is one of our weaknesses so one thing I will always say that sit down sometime and analyze the situation that you know the situation is this really the situation the way I'm looking at it is this the right, right perspective is there something that I have done which has aggravated the situation and how I can solve so if you will calm down you know anger is really a few second thing and if you come out from that situation just for a few seconds your mind set will be different and if you look at your video when you were angry you will be surprised how in the world I said what I said and how I acted the way I acted because that's a different situation so always try to find you know your, your own mistake our own mistakes my brothers and my sisters and in the last I will say always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give baraka in your home fi buyutin azin allahu an turfa'a wa yuskara fi hasmuhu yusabbihu lahu fiha bil ghuduwi wal asal surah nur you know this is how we want our houses our houses should be the houses of peace our houses should be the houses where we have tranquility we have understanding with each other yes we will have some conflicts we have we will have some issue, issues we will collide with each other you know time to time but overall our houses are houses of sakina houses of peace and these are the houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in Surah Nur from these houses you will see you know the the sound of the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the houses where people are praying these are the houses from where you will hear the hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will hear durood salutation on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and this is a blessed month of Ramadan we are going through and this is the month that we should remind ourselves that our houses should be the houses where angels they surround our houses because the houses where you have Allah's name and people are reading Quran then these houses angels they see from the sky like we see stars from the earth and brothers remember not every angel has a permission to read Quran so whenever we read Quran in our houses that angels they surround our house and they call other angels so the easiest way to gather angels around you is to read Quran so we stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do zikr in our house 
we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives in our houses tranquility, sakina, peace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to pass through this difficult time we all are going through. And we all are, you know, in a journey. And we all learn every day, including myself. Every one of us learn every day. And we teach each other, we learn from each other. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He keep all of us in peace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resolve the issues we are facing today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our families together and intact. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us wisdom and tawfiq that we handle our family issues in the best possible way. Wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah.